Yes, welcome to Biology Made Easy. Let's look at arthropods, their characteristics. Their bodies are truly segmented. They have exoskeleton of chitin. They have jointed appendages. I want to explain what these three mean. Truly segmented means it's not a full segment. You can really see a segment. It's not like in tapeworms that you could see some segments that were not real segments. In an analytes also have real segmented analytes. And arthropods are also segmented, truly segmented. Also, their bodies, they have exoskeleton made up of chitin. A skeleton is a rigid frame that supports a body, that protects a body, that gives shape to a body. And for these organisms, the skeleton is outside. That is why we call exoskeleton. A skeleton inside is endoskeleton. All right, good. So the arthropods have exoskeleton of chitin. As you can see, the chitin is very thick. All right, skeleton made up of chitin, as you see. And then they have jointed appendages. Appendage, if it's a body, Anything that sticks out of a body is an appendage. So they have jointed appendages, including walking legs, antennae, etc. Jointed appendages. So now we want to look at the classes of arthropods. Yes, yeah, so we have class Crustacea. That's the Crustaceans. Class Chilopoda. Class Diplopoda. Chilopoda is centipedes, diplopoda is millipedes, and these two classes are normally put together as myriapods. And then we have class arachnida, arachnids, and then we have class insecta, insects. Yes, now we want to look at the characteristics of each classes of arthropods. And let's use this to help us to separate them. We have insects, crustacea, arachnids, centipedes, millipedes, and these are myriapods. Now, if you look at body divisions, insects have three body divisions, head, thorax, abdomen. Crustacea have two body divisions. They have what the head and the thorax are fused, head and thorax fused, and known as cephalothorax. Then you have the abdomen. Arachnids have the same thing, body division. They have cephalothorax and abdomen. All right. Then centipedes and millipedes also have two body divisions. They have a head and a trunk. These are the differences between these arthropods as far as the body divisions are concerned. Now, when we come to look at walking legs, Insects have three pairs of walking legs. Crustacea have five pairs of walking legs. Arachnids, four pairs of walking legs. Centipedes have a pair of walking legs on each segment of the body. Millipedes have a pair of body legs on the first three segments of the body. The rest of the body has two pairs of walking legs on them. This is a, a millipede. You see the first three segments, K has one pair of walking leg. The rest has two pairs of walking legs. That's a millipede. Good. So we can separate centipedes from millipedes. Then let's look at another characteristic as we compare the arthropods. Now we look at antennae. Insects has a, have a pair of antennae. Crustaceans have two pairs of antennae. A pair of long ones and a pair of short ones. Arachnids have no antennae. Centipedes have one pair of antennae. Millipede, one pair of antennae. Eyes. 
Insects have compound eyes, one pair. Crustacea have compound eyes, one pair. Spiders, arachnids, they have simple eyes and can be plenty as eight or more. Centipedes have simple eyes, one pair. Millipedes have simple eyes. Now, are there other features that are characteristic to each of these groups? Yes, insects have wings. Crustacea have chilliped and chiller. We'll talk about what they are. Arachnids have chelicerae and pedipalps. Centipedes have poison claws. All these organisms have various different types of mouth parts. Now we, we talked about arachnids having chelicerae and pedipalps. What are chelicerae and pedipalps? Arachnids have four pairs of legs. They have chelicerae, which is a, a, a mouth part. That is it, the first segment, chelicerae. The second pair of appendage is the pedipalp. And the chelicerae, they are mouth parts. They are used for various things. Some have fans. Ticks, for instance, will have fans to cut. Some are used as poison claws. What about the pedipalp? The pedipalp is the second pair of appendage. It also has various uses in the different arachnids. In scorpions, the pedipalp is enlarged to form claws. Now, when you come to the spider, the pedipalp is this one, the second appendage there. It's also used to hold prey. It helps in shaping webs. It helps in catching prey. All right. And also it helps during mating. That is the spider's pedipalp. You can imagine what the pedipalp of the tick does to help it hold onto the prey, suck blood. So that is arachnids. Now, what about the crustacean? We mentioned that their first special feature is the chelipid and chilla. You see, we said they, are, they have five pairs of walking legs and the first pair of walking legs is enlarged to form what is called the chelipid. And at the end of the chelipid are claws and the claws are called chili. So that is the chelipid and chili in crustaceans. We have looked at the arachnids, the myriapods, centipede, and then millipede. We've looked at them. They are elongated, they are flattened. We'll look at their adaptive features in good time. Now let's look at the crustacea and look at crustacea in a bit of a detail. Now this crustacea is made up of different groups of organisms. These are microscopic forms of crustacea. Very, very different. Look at them. There's the Daphne, Cyclops, Ostracod. The Ostracod almost look like a seed, kind of, when it's rolling in water and you look at it, it looks like a seed. Still in crustaceans, you have sessile crustacean. This is called a binacle. It starts as a, a small flea like this one. It settles on a rock and then it produces this calcareous shell around itself. So all you see is its tentacles here. All right, like a small flea, it settles on a rock. And so this is a calcium something stuck to the rock. So this is a sessile. Sessile means it doesn't move, crustacea. All right, when it's, in, it's on rocks, all right, at um, intertidal levels of the sea. When the water goes in and there's no water, these tentacles will be pushed in with, a, with water inside the case to keep it alive. When water is flowing over the rocks, then the tentacles move out.
Then you have another group of crustaceans. These are large, mobile, aquatic. In here you have crayfish and crabs. Crayfish, prawns, shrimps, etc. They all are in this group. And we talked about them. The wood louse is the only land crustacea. It lives in moist soil that is rich in decomposing wood or leaf litter. Leaf litter is bits and pieces of decomposing plant material. Even in this plantain that was found in the bush, wood louse live in it. All right, it's a land crustacea, okay? The exoskeleton is quite tough, but it lives in cool places and in soil where there's plenty of leaf litter. Good, so that is crustacea. Now let's look at insects. Insects, you know, insects are very common. We've talked about their um, three body divisions, etc. They are the varied groups of insects with varied adaptations, body structure, mouth parts, very varied. We'll have a section and look at adaptations of insects, All right? We'll also have a session and look at adaptations of myriapods, adaptation, their structures and various features that makes them able to live successfully in the habitats. Today, we are looking at their classification. Well, we end here and I want to say thank you and goodbye.